Hi everyone, thank you so much for coming to the CNHP info session for study abroad. We're gonna be highlighting some global opportunities for you both on and off campus. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, um, I'll guess, introduce myself since we're recording now as well. My name is Ashley Trump. I'm an Education Abroad Advisor, um, and I advise for some of the programs we're going to be talking about today. Andrew, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Hi, everyone. My name is Andrew Sandifer, and I'm an Education Abroad Advisor as well. Um, I advise for our programs going to the, uh, England and Wales, um, and I'll discuss our healthcare program a little bit in London later in the session. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so, so just some reasons why study abroad, if you're thinking about it or just uh, want a little bit more information about what you could get out of the program. Uh, one thing is to maximize your college experience. Um, after students have graduated, there have been some polls of, of matriculated students and they've asked students, what's one thing you regret most from um, you know, from college that you didn't get a chance to do, and one of them was not studying abroad. Um, so a, a great opportunity for you would be to, to get out and get to see the world while you're, while you have the opportunity in college. Um, to immerse yourself in a new culture and surroundings. Um, one thing that's really cool about study abroad is you get the opportunity to actually spend a uh, elongated amount of time in, in a particular country. You're not just going as a tourist, you're going there to live. So you're going to be doing just your everyday daily things like grocery shopping, doing your laundry, just everyday things in, in a different culture. And it gives you a really um, new experience and gives you the chance to see things through a new lens as well. Um, next bullet point, learn about your field from an international perspective. Um, you'll get to obviously be taking classes in a different country and learning from professors with different international experiences um, that have studied in different countries themselves. So you get the opportunity to really get a new perspective on your field. Um, step outside of your comfort zone and leave Philly. Um, make yourself stand out to future employers in grad school. While you're studying abroad, you're going to be getting a lot of different skills that can help you to um, stand out to both future employers and or grad school, whatever your, your path after Drexel takes you. And um, studying abroad will definitely help you to stand out in the future. And then um, on top of that, getting to travel and explore other countries. So while you're studying abroad, you'll get the opportunity um, hopefully COVID permitting <laughs> uh, to travel from one country that you're studying in as well as to other countries that you get to you get to visit that are neighboring as well. Um, also just getting to explore your own host country is a really great opportunity getting to know more than just your host city but getting to travel all around and get to see how the language varies and get to see how the culture varies and it's a really great experience. So for Next slide, we're going to talk a little bit about the elephant in the room of COVID. <laughs> so certain summer 2021 programs are still scheduled to run. Um, at the moment, fall 2021 and beyond are still scheduled to run as normal. Um, however, we do recognize that the situation is fluid and that things are constantly changing and we're getting more information from um, like the CDC and from the State Department. And we're, we're monitoring that we have an international or senior international director of Health, safety and security and she has been monitoring the situation very very closely and we want to make sure that you'll definitely be safe going abroad um so we like i said we recognize that the situation is fluid um, but at the moment fall 2021 and onward is scheduled to run as planned um, we're currently accepting applications for winter 2022 and beyond um, and because of the the current situation just being so so fluid um, we are being flexible with withdrawals with refunds etc um, and as I mentioned, your, your safety is our number one priority. So we are going to be monitoring the situation closely. And if it doesn't seem safe, we'll be making sure that you can maybe defer to another term or defer to another program that is running. Um, we're really trying to make sure that you, you stay safe um, as well as get the best experience possible while at Drexel. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so some popular CNHP programs we're going to start highlighting. Uh, we're going to first um, highlight um, just a couple of the full term programs and these programs are called freestanding programs. So all the three of the programs that I'm going to highlight next are called freestanding programs. Um, and freestanding programs are a little different than our other model of exchange program, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, one of the things with freestanding programs is you're going to be getting Drexel credit. So um, it's gonna come back as Drexel credit with regular Drexel letter grades and they'll be factored into your GPA. Uh, and then for most freestanding programs, there's also gonna be a program fee. So the way finances work with freestanding programs is you're gonna pay your regular Drexel tuition, uh, which means you keep all of your Drexel aid as well. Um, and then you just pay your, your normal Drexel tuition and then there'll be a program fee and that usually covers housing on some programs that even covers meals. Um, on some programs it'll cover excursions. Um, so that'll vary program by program. All right, so our first program we're gonna highlight is Drexel in Italy. It's the Culinary Arts and Hospitality Management in Rome at the American University of Rome. 
Um, and what you'll do for this program, you're going to be taking four to five courses um, between 12 and 20 credits, and that will be for all of our programs. You must be between 12 and 20 credits to remain a full time student. Um, you'll take an Italian language course, um, two Drexel courses that are taught by culinary arts and hospitality management professors that will actually go over with you. Um, and then you'll take one or two additional courses at the American University of Rome. Um, and this program is going to run every three years. Uh, the next cycle for this program is going to be it's running this upcoming fall, um, fall 2021. And so the next one's going to be fall 2024. Um, but if yet you don't want to wait that long and you're super eager to go to Rome, there is a standard track program uh, where you can enroll directly at the university, or I'm sorry, the American University of Rome. Um, and it won't be specific to culinary arts and hospitality management, but it will have a wide array of options for you to choose from because you'll have most of their course catalog to look at. So if you have like general education requirements or maybe social science electives, humanities electives, or maybe you're just really interested in learning Italian, there would be opportunities for you to do so there. Um, there's also just a, another option for you to consider. There's also a sport management program. Um, at the American University of Rome that's run kind of similar to the culinary arts and hospitality management program that's going to be run as well every three years. Um, so the next time that one's running is going to be fall 2023. Um, it was it's going to be running this upcoming year as well, it was supposed to run last year, um, but because of COVID obviously it, it did not so it's running this year as well, so we have three programs coming up in Rome this upcoming fall so Rome will be very busy with Drexel students uh, this upcoming fall. Um, and for this program, it's going to be 16 weeks long, and the GPA requirement is a 3.0. All right, the next program is called Drexel in Costa Rica, Healthcare in Latin America. And this program is going to be 16 Drexel credits, and it's offered in winter term only. Uh, the nice thing about this program is that being that we are a quarter school, some of our programs uh, some of our programs are semester programs, so they don't quite fit with the Drexel calendar, but this program does. It is a quarter program, so it fits perfectly in the winter quarter. Um, and for this program, you're going to be taking five different courses. Um, what you'll do is you'll take, uh, you can see them on the screen there, you'll take a Spanish class that's specific for the health sciences, and then you'll choose um, two of the other courses, so economics of healthcare and the healthcare system in Costa Rica. And then the fourth course um, that you actually get to choose, I'm sorry, it'll be four courses you're taking, not five. <laughs> there are five listed. The first three are, are mandatory courses, and then of four and five, you get to choose between vulnerable populations and tropical diseases. Um, and I believe I did say that comes to 16 credits total. Uh, there's also opportunities to do um, a volunteer placement as well. Every student involved will be taking part in a volunteer opportunity, and it depends on kind of what you're interested in. Um, so for example, if you're a really advanced Spanish speaker, um, so we usually recommend Spanish 310 or higher, um, you're able to do a, a clinical shadowing rotation actually within the hospital. It's at the um, hospital what is it, Biblica Clinica, Clinica Biblica, Clinica Biblica, yeah, sorry about that, just completely forgot the hospital that they work with, um, so you can do a clinical shadowing there, um, if there's uh, like other populations you're interested, like maybe you're interested in working with children, they can try to get you working, um, maybe you can help teach English, uh, there's different opportunities for you to work with different populations, depending on kind of what your interests are, if, if you're interested in environmental welfare, they definitely have environmental welfare type um, intern or not internships, I'm sorry, volunteer opportunities. So there are definitely opportunities for you to, to get involved. And if there's something that you're super interested in that they don't have, they're also able to try to reach out and make those connections for you. Um, they're very eager to work with students. So as part of the application requirement, you'll let them know what your interests are for a volunteer opportunity. And they'll try to connect you with the, the organization that they think you'd be most comfortable with. And that would both fit your goals, both personally and professionally, as well as the organization's goals. Um, the other thing with this program is that you'll live with host families, which I think is a great opportunity. Um, it's really great for linguistic development. So if one of your main goals when going to Costa Rica is Spanish language acquisition, um, living with host families is a great opportunity. Um, I think the reason for that is whenever you're living with a host family, you don't really have the opportunity to kind of retreat back to your dorm to English speaking Netflix and kind of go back into your English speaking mind, you actually will be having dinner with a host family and you'll be watching TV with them or playing with their kids or whatever it might be. You'll be doing all that in Spanish, which is a great opportunity to really immerse yourself in the daily culture of the language. Um, for this program, there is a Spanish 101 language requirement. So you'll have to have at least through Spanish 101. If you have not had Spanish 101 at Drexel yet, but intend to go on the program, but you've taken maybe you've taken Spanish in high school and you feel pretty comfortable, um, you can take the placement test here at Drexel and test out of 101. Um, no matter what, you will be taking a placement test whenever you get to Costa Rica. And then they're gonna put you in the Spanish for health sciences that is most appropriate to your language level, whatever they think you'd be most comfortable with. 
Um, and then on top of that, the, the last little bit here is that there is an opportunity to do a co-op after your program if you are interested. And I believe that's all I have to say for Costa Rica. Sorry, that was very long-winded. <laughs> uh, next slide, please. Thanks, Andrew. All right, so I'm going to jump in here. So I'm going to discuss Drexel in England, uh, healthcare in London. And I advise for this program. So if this is of interest to you, you'll be meeting with me um, to open an application. So this program is uh, focused on, as I said, healthcare in London. So a lot of our nursing students and health uh, sciences students have gone on this program in previous years. Uh, students would be taking 18 credits total um, and grades that you would be getting letter grades that would apply towards your GPA. And this is a spring quarter program and it fits perfectly into Drexel spring quarter. So it begins in late March, early April and uh, goes until early to mid June. So you're back in time for summer quarter courses. Um, so as I said, it's a spring quarter program and the deadline for this is November 1st, 2021. So there's plenty of time to uh, look through this program, uh, open an application and complete the application. And during this program, you would be taking a total of four courses and you're required to take this COM T380 course, British Culture and Visual Media. As I said, it is required. You're going to be in the UK, England, and London. So might as well take a British culture course while you're there. And then you're going to take um, three more courses of those four other courses that are listed there. So you have the opportunity to take healthcare ethics, economics of healthcare systems, genetics in nursing and health, and social welfare issues in the UK. Um, so those are the courses you'd be taking. FIE is our partner that runs this. And FIE is a great partner of ours. We've been working with them for over 20 years. Um, a lot of their courses are uh, focused on experiential learning. So there are many field trips and outings that you would take um, on this program. So you would get to go uh, tour like healthcare facilities and things like that. Um, and they have really great professors uh, that will be teaching these courses and kind of showing you the ropes of the healthcare um, industry in London. So um, in addition, you'd be living in FIE accommodations. Um, and so you'd be living in the neighborhood of South Kensington, which is a gorgeous neighborhood um, within London. It's uh, a quick tube ride from downtown London where the London Eye is and Parliament um, and the River Thames. So there's just a lot um, to do obviously in London and you would be living in a really central location um, with great transit opportunities to get to different neighborhoods within the city of London. Um, and again, it's a spring quarter program, so it's approximately 10 weeks. Um, so most students that have attended um, have really, really enjoyed their time there. Um, the last cohort that went was back in 2019. Um, and I actually had a chance to um, see them. I was doing a site visit over there um, and they were absolutely loving it. Um, it was a group of mostly nursing students um, and they had really positive things to say. One of the students actually has a blog on our website. Um, so if you are interested in learning more about those students' experiences, feel free to go into our website and check out our blogs. It's linked on our uh, main webpage. So I do want to discuss costs of these Drexel programs. So for all Drexel sponsored programs, you do pay your regular Drexel tuition as if you were going uh, to Drexel. Uh, there is an additional program fee, as we discussed, for all three of these programs that we have gone over, Rome, Costa Rica, and London. And um, these program fees typically include housing, um, potentially excursions, um, potentially some meals here and there. So it really depends on the program. Um, if you were looking into an exchange program, which is not what we've discussed, um, then you would have to pay for the cost of housing and living. Um, that's not included. There is no program fee on an exchange program. And so what an exchange program essentially is, is that you become a student at a university abroad and you're taking courses within that university with other local um, and international students at that university. So it's a bit of a different um, style uh, than these other programs, which typically have a larger um, US uh, institutional presence. So you typically be going with a group of Drexel students or students from other American universities on these programs that we've discussed. Um, you typically keep all your financial aid that you normally receive. Um, there are scholarships available. So for example, our office does um, a scholarship opportunity called the Dragons Abroad Scholarship. And there are three different categories you can apply to. 
there's a financial needs scholarship, a project scholarship, and a diversity scholarship. And you can apply to one, two, or all three, totally up to you. And you would open these applications when you open your study abroad application for whatever program you're interested in. Um, and then there are also a lot of outside scholarships that you could look into. So our website has a whole chart that details out different external scholarships. So for example, if you're a Pell Grant recipient, um, it's possible that you'll be eligible for the Gilman Scholarship, um, which is approximately $5,000 if you were to receive that. Um, there's also, if you're interested in Asia, for example, I know we didn't discuss any programs in Asia, um, but there is something called the Freeman Asia, uh, which um, would grant you funds for studying abroad uh, at a, in an Asian country. Um, there's also, um, there's just general scholarships. There are country specific scholarships. Um, so just take a look at our website to see what um, you might be able to qualify for. And it's always good to note down when these deadlines are because they might be different from our application deadlines. Um, in terms of personal spending, so that varies from student to student and it varies for, for every uh, location um, that we send students to. So certain countries are way more expensive than others. So London it has a very high cost of living. So that can be a pretty expensive program just because of the cost of living there. Um, Costa Rica is one of our most affordable programs just because the cost of living is a lot lower. Um, so think about what your budget is um, and where you might wanna go because um, that could also be a deciding factor. Um, so in terms of program requirements, sometimes you have to consider factoring your co-op to this. Um, so if you're interested in a program that only runs during your co-op cycle, um, so let's say you have spring summer co-op and you're interested in the spring London program, um, you can request to have your co-op cycle switched. Study abroad is one of those um, few exceptions that you can get your co-op cycle switched. Um, so don't worry if you are scheduled for co-op during a term you want to study abroad, um, you can get it switched. You just need to make sure you work with your co-op advisor on that. Um, additionally, definitely make yourself stand out. So for Costa Rica and Italy, there's a GPA of 3.0. For London, there's a GPA of 2.75. Um, developing faculty relationships for strong recommendations. So part of the application process does require um, recommend, like recommendations. One has to be from a professor you've had in class and another can be from another professor you've had in class or a co-op supervisor. Um, so just in your current classes, if you're thinking about studying abroad, um, get to know your professors, um, meet with them during their office hours just so you can establish that relationship uh, because we do look at recommendations as part of this application process. Um, Well-written and thought out essays, definitely take some time to put your essays together. Um, we ask you why you wanna study abroad and what are you looking to get out of this experience academically, professionally, and personally. Um, we want to hear what your motivations and goals are. So definitely think about what those are and um, I don't rush to the essays. That's all I can say. Um, deadlines, it varies sometimes from program to program, but as we said, um, the Costa Rica program deadline, I believe is September 15th or is it September 1st, Ashley? I can't remember now to go back. I think the 15th. September 15th. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, and then the London program deadline is November 1st. Um, so each program's deadline is listed on our online program brochure. So just make sure to check those out for additional information that we haven't covered in this session. Okay, so I also want to discuss intensive courses abroad. So we're going to shift a little bit to shorter, shorter programs that are one to three weeks, typically, um, and they are faculty led. So there's a professor leading the charge. And then also um, they happen during the break period. So fall, spring, winter, and summer breaks, we always have intensive courses abroad. Um, so the credits will go on as part of the regular term. So if you did a fall break program, for example, the credits would go on to your uh, fall quarter courses. You just have to make sure you leave enough room so you don't go over 20 credits. Um, as I said, it's faculty led. so. Uh, different professors lead different uh, programs um, based on some of their expertise or a um, area of focus they might have. And we'll just, I can give a few examples in a second. Um, you do not need to meet with an education abroad advisor to open an ICA application. Um, 
It's different for full term programs. If you want to go to Costa Rica, London or Rome, for example, you need to meet with an education abroad advisor. But for these programs, you don't need to meet with us. You can open the application on your own. There's no additional tuition on these programs. Um, there is a program fee that does vary in amount. Um, so it can be as low as maybe $1,000 to as high as $4,000. It just depends on the program. Um, and there is no GPA requirement for intensive courses abroad. Um, so definitely recommend looking into these if you are interested um, in maybe you're not ready to go abroad for a full term or maybe you've already gone abroad for a full term and you are interested in a shorter term program. All right. So some previously run ICAs include um, Global Aging in Santiago, uh, Chile. Uh, there's a fall break in Singapore that focuses on psychiatric rehabilitation. There's a winter break in Trinidad and Tobago program that focuses on culture, cuisine, commerce, and citizen, citizenship. Uh, there's a winter break in Guatemala that focuses on development and action. Um, there's a grad program, if there's any grad students here, um, that focuses on digital media and art therapy and counseling, open to undergrads as well. And there's so many more. Um, so these are just some previously run ICAs. Um, there are, but as I said, there are tons more that happen. Sometimes they happen every year. Sometimes they happen every other year. Other times they're kind of a special one-time deal and then they don't happen again. So it, it does vary on the ICA. So I just also wanted to focus on a couple of these that are CNHP focused. So there is one um, that focuses on global aging in Santiago, Chile. Um, I'm not sure when this will be running next, but just to give you an idea, um, it's open to undergrad and grad students, uh, defines important concepts of global aging, and it describes the, how the trends in aging are different throughout the world. So if this is something that interests you, um, we have more information on our website, um, and it'll be announced hopefully soon when this will be running next. There's also one that focuses on psychiatric rehabilitation in Singapore, again, open to undergraduate and grad students. Um, and this will afford students the opportunity to apply psychiatric, psychiatric rehabilitation principles and practices um, in international behavioral health communities. Um, you get to define the concepts of recovery and benefits of community integration. Um, and you get to compare and contrast one feature of the American with Disabilities Act to the fundamental health service uh, mental health service delivery. So these are just a few things that you can um, learn about on this program. And then I'm going to turn it back over to Ashley. Hello. All right. So just some some other places there. So the places that we highlight are obviously CNHP specific or CNHP focused, um, but there are a plethora of other places you can go. Maybe you have um, some room in your schedule that or your academic plan rather that you can do some um, free electives or maybe social science electives humanities electives, whatever you might have the space for. Um, there are some other places in here on the, the screen are just a, a list of some places that past CNHP students have gone. Um, and you can also see next to each location if it's been an exchange or free standing. and Andrew explained what exchange was, but again, that's just um, directly enrolling at a local university. So you're taking classes alongside both local um, and other international students. And if it is in um, another country, for example, let me see here, um, the Hispanic Studies program, for example, I advise for that in Spain, um, that would be, that is a freestanding program, but that would be a uh, where you can take classes in Spanish. Um, so if you're interested in studying a modern language, you have that opportunity as well. Um, so yeah, there's a plethora of opportunities. So I definitely encourage you to check out our website. And if you have any um, questions to reach out to us for sure. Uh, there are some other global engagement opportunities for you to look into as well. Um, some that are on campus, um, others that are off campus that we can give you more information on. Um, to begin, the first on campus opportunity is the Global Engagement Scholars. This is a program you can apply to be a part of and um, it will be designated actually on your transcript and it involves with the combination or involves both a combination of coursework and co-curricular activities um, and one of those activities could be study abroad for example um, as well as a modern language study um, and participating in different global campus events that um, can be held by our office or other offices or departments um, global classrooms is another really great opportunity that is offered to you at drexel um, what these classes are are there classes that meet um, usually mostly synchronously, sometimes asynchronously, sometimes a combo of the two. Um, and you're meeting with peers at a university abroad and you're working through technology to work on different projects. Um, and if you'd like any more information on either one of those, um, please feel free to email global at or you can reach out to Andrew or I. 
Um, and then another off-campus opportunity that we'd like to highlight for you is something called the Dornsife Global Development Scholars. Um, this is open to all majors and you get to work alongside our partners at World Vision International um, and you're working on a uh, wash product. So that's water um, access, sanitation, and hygiene. Um, and some of the topics that you can work on or projects you can work on include things within health education, um, change management, social, um, social marketing, community engagement, monitoring and evaluation, and economic development. Um, and if you have, if that's something that is of interest to you, um, reach out to our colleague Idris Robinson. Um, his email is right there on the screen and he'll be able to give you more information on that program. And again, you can also reach out to Andrew or I and we can connect you with him. All right, so the next steps that we have for you, um, visit our website and our website is right on the screen um, or you can just go to, if you go to Drexel's homepage in this Google or Google uh, search rather, search global, you'll come right to us. Um, and you can start looking at some of our programs, whether that be ICAs or full-term programs and you can get more information um, to help you kind of narrow down your search. There are different search techniques. So we have a search by country feature. We have a search by um, subject feature and we have a search by term feature. So if there's a certain term that works, just works specifically for you, you can search by term as well. Um, the next step would be to attend a study abroad 101 info session. Um, they're gonna be held this term um, on Wednesdays um, at, do I have that correctly? At three, I'm sorry, is that correct, Andrew? Wednesdays at three? Yeah. Okay, Wednesday. perfect. <laughs> I wrote it backwards on my notes here. Yeah, Wednesdays at three, thank you. Um, then next, I would suggest that you meet with your academic advisor and go through your plan of study and try to make sure that you have the right term picked out and that the program you choose um, will come fulfill uh, re degree requirements for you, essentially. Um, the most appropriate year for most students to study abroad, and again, this isn't for everyone, um, it would be sophomore, pre-junior, or junior year. Um, there are certain freshmen that are eligible for certain freshman-friendly ICAs, um, and sometimes it works out senior year, it just kind of depends on your, your academic plan of study, so that's going to vary person to person. Um, the next thing for you to do after you've done a study abroad 101 and spoken with your academic advisor is come meet with us. Um, so you can email studyabroad at drexel.edu. Um, you're also welcome to contact Andrew and I directly and we can connect you with the correct person. Um, if you're interested, I'll just say if you're interested in London, um, that's going to be Andrew. He'll be your go-to person for London. Um, if you're interested in Costa Rica or Rome, you can reach out to me directly. Um, and if there's any other program and you're not sure who to reach out to, again, feel free, we can connect you um, or just email our general inbox at studyabroad at drexel.edu and we can definitely connect you with the correct person. Next slide, please. And last but not least, our contact info. So uh, currently, as you can tell with my cat popping in behind me all the time, uh, we are still currently working from home. Uh, so our office, if we were on campus, we're at the corner of Arch and 33rd, or yeah, <laughs> did I say that? I almost forgot because I was, haven't been to campus in such a long time. Um, and we're in the academic building. We're on the second floor. We're in suite 201. So just go up the stairs and we're the, the first suite that you, you'll come across. It's the one with all the hanging globes. Um, you can also find us on Snapchat, on Facebook, and on Instagram. We definitely encourage you to follow us on those. And we um, will post up uh, highlights on programs. We'll post updates on things that are going on in our office. Uh, we'll post things like deadline extensions, that sort of thing. So um, follow us for sure on social media. Um, and then if you have any general questions for any of us, feel free to reach out through the general study abroad at drexel.edu inbox. Um, and our coordinator will connect you with the correct person um, that can help with whatever questions you may have.